thousands of women around the world spoke out against sexual harassment using just two words, Me Too. Now there are millions of Me Too's out there on social media. In the wake of explosive allegations against film producer Harvey Weinstein, actor Alyssa Milano posted a message on Twitter. Using the term coined by activist Tarana Burke a decade earlier, Milano urged women who had experienced sexual assault or harassment to tweet Me Too. What followed is widely considered to be a watershed moment. We saw people in different countries taking to the streets. The accusations against powerful men first emerged in Hollywood. Weinstein, Kevin Spacey and Bill Cosby were taken to court. Weinstein was sentenced to 23 years in prison and is currently facing another trial. And allegations quickly surfaced in other industries, politics, food, theater and journalism. Prominent anchors like Matt Lauer and Charlie Rose were fired. In music, R. Kelly was sentenced to 30 years in prison on racketeering and sex trafficking charges. Canadian singer Jacob Hogart is facing five years after he was found guilty of sexual assault causing bodily harm. In the sports world, perhaps the most stunning example. I want the nightmares of you coming into my room to go away. More than 150 women accused Larry Nasser, a former doctor for USA Gymnastics, of sexual abuse. In Canada, sponsors withdrew their support. We liquidated a portion of our investments to pay. And Hockey Canada's entire board of directors resigned over allegations of sexual assault by players and mismanagement of settlements to victims. As industries reckon with bad behavior, Me Too has become a movement that continues to evolve. Lisa Shing, CBC News, Toronto. So how has the Me Too movement evolved and expanded? What could its future hold? With me is Farah Khan, an advocate and educator on sexual violence. So Farah, we know this conversation has been happening for a lot longer than five years. But when you look at the momentum of the Me Too movement, what has come of that? Well, I think that people have realized that it's not a moment, it's a movement. And that survivors, advocates, researchers, educators, students have been asking for this for a long time. And so we're seeing a watershed time where people not only started talking about it then, but continue to talk about it. From Hockey Canada to athletics to schools to parents, people are talking about this and saying we need to take action. And it means, I suppose, that, that more women are feeling comfortable coming forward, but there's an asterisk there yes. because it... it it, it must be the case that, that there's not an equal level of comfort. No, there isn't. So communities that have been policed, have been criminalized, black communities, indigenous communities, racialized communities may feel and do feel that they can't go forward to the police because there's a, not a trust there. Also, young people, when they go forward, feeling that no one's really going to believe them. We also see women in the workplace, when they do report, what research has come out of Time's Out, has found that seven out of 10 women, when they do come forward, face reprisal. So why would I go forward if I'm gonna be harmed again? Which is what they said for a long time. Yeah, and it continues to happen. One of the conversations uh, from the Me Too movement that I think has, has become interesting for people is these non-disclosure agreements mm -hmm. that, that women suggest they were bullied into signing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it kept them quiet, but, but it kept them from warning other women. It kept them from, from talking about their own story. There's been a big push to try to ban them in some places, but what, what's happened with that? Well, actually good things that have happened with it. So PEI is the first province or territory to put forward and pass legislation around NDAs. And so that's really important. And, and Manitoba is going forward as well. So we need every province and territory to look at NDAs and look at how they're actually very harmful. We saw that in the Hockey Canada conversation. We see that with Harvey Weinstein victims. We see that again and again and again. One of the things that I think people need to realize too is that NDAs are not protecting anyone, especially other survivors or people that might be potentially harmed. So they need to go. Okay, lots more work to go. Farah Khan, thank you. Thank you.